Welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. We are officially on episode 22, but it is in a way a continuation of episode 20 mm -hmm. because it is per, uh, the third part of a three-part series of poems about animals looking at people. Because what else would we read about? I mean, you know, As Mike it said, it's kind of like the puppy bowl of poetry. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Although I don't, I don't know if we've seen anything cute. None of these animals have been cute. Right. We, had, we had the ox, yeah. we had the bats, and of course, what would be more fitting than an earthworm. Yeah, we're going down in size, <laughs> right? From... All right, so this one's by Louise Glick, and I got it out of this book, uh, Louise Glick Poems, 1962 to 2012. And I first became interested in Louise Glick because I read a review of this book. Mm -hmm. Just I think it was the New York Times or one of those. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll get the book. And I instantly became very, very um, drawn to a series of poems uh, which is actually in this book, uh, the original book, called The Wild Iris, which are poems, fr uh, partly, uh, poems from the perspective of flowers, where the flowers in the garden and in the yard uh, talk to the reader. And Mike and I, we've read those, and they are fascinating. Yeah, John right. introduced me to Louise Glick uh, a few years ago, and I actually started using them with my students in class, and we had some phenomenal discussions. I mean, just the level of, uh, I don't know, just the level of stuff you can talk about with her work is pretty cool, even for high school kids, so right. it's been fun. And I had my students a couple years ago make a series of videos where they analyze those flower poems. So we'll put the address on the bottom of the screen here, and you can go look at those, because it's really interesting to watch the students try to navigate the different voices and the different attitudes of the poems, because the poems are they're brutal. Yeah. Right? They have poems. These flowers going after each other. I mean, they're so they are angry. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great yeah. series of poems if you haven't read it, The Wild Iris. Um, so once I, I kind of read those and I became interested in those, I started reading more of the other parts of the collected poems. And I came up across this poem, which is called Earthworm. And it's from the perspective of an earthworm looking at humans. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Mortal standing on top of the earth, refusing to enter the earth. You tell yourself you are able to see deeply the conflicts of which you are made, but facing death, you will not dig deeply. If you sense that pity engulfs you, you are not delusional. Not all pity descends from higher to lesser. Some arises out of the earth itself, persistent yet devoid of coercion. We can be split in two, but you are mutilated at the core your mind detached from your feelings. Repression does not deceive organisms like ourselves. Once you enter the earth, you will not fear the earth. Once you inhabit your terror, death will come to seem a web of channels or tunnels like a sponges or honeycombs, which, as part of us, you will be free to explore. Perhaps you will find in these travels a wholeness that eluded you. As men and women, you were never free to register in your body whatever left a mark on your spirits. Wow. <laughs> this fits right in with Luis. This is what I know right. about her stuff. Right. It is an, it is an earthworm giving humans a, a lecture on yeah, their flaws. Yeah, a piece of his or her mind. Right, right. Man, These man. are your flaws. Yes. Maybe. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> According um, to an earthworm. Right, and that's what I, I, these last three poems, the three animal poems, I really like the fact that they're taking a step back and saying, okay, what does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. Right, what are the limits of humanity? Um, where are we faltering or what are our strengths? Right, mm -hmm. and it, it's humbling to think of an earthworm, the mm -hmm. lowliest of the low, right, giving us a lecture on. Yeah, how to be. On how to really be. Yeah. Well, can right. I, you, can you mind if I say something of first about this? Yeah. This was, the first part of it, it seemed like, okay, lecturing, you know, <laughs> angry, human nature is terrible, and those kinds of things. But then, the imagery of that second half, where it starts with, once you enter the earth, you will not fear the earth. Once you inhabit your terror, death will come to seem like a web of channels. Da, 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 da. As a part of us, you will be free to explore. So what's going on here is, this speaker is talking about once you're dead and buried, earthworms will come and eat your body yeah. and carry you through the earth, and then you will be f truly free. So this is actually a meditation on overcoming the fear of death. Right. 
as how I read it, which is pretty mind blowing because you think it says, uh, which as part of us, perhaps you'll find in these travels a wholeness that eluded you. And that's really creepy to think about. It's like, yeah, you know what? Earthworms who live in a cemetery are carrying, <laughs> so seriously, they're carrying pieces of people around I under know. the ground. And it's saying, the earthworm is saying, that's what's going to set you free. That's just like a crazy image. <laughs> I've never even thought of that before. You know, right. they're like, earthworms are carrying us around yeah. under the ground. And it is like an afterlife, right? It's like a next life that yeah. your physical body lives. And then when she says something, or he, uh, da, 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 we can be split in two, but you are mutilated at the core, your mind detached from your feelings. So only after death, when you're part of the earthworm, you become one again. I don't know, what, what, what's well, your commentary? And that's where my question was, kind of in the middle there, when it takes the turn. Uh, your mind detached from your feelings. Repression does not deceive organisms like ourselves. So clearly, you know, it's about repression and how we repress things and don't want to think about them. Mm -hmm. um, but what does that have to do with the body? Or, oh, no, I'm sorry, your mind detached from your feelings. Oh, so that's interesting. So how thinking and reasoning is different from feeling. But then it get, when it gets to the end, to register in your body whatever left a mark on your spirit. Mm -hmm. You were never free to register in your body. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused I about think, that. I think because the earthworm, is it's all one, right? I just feel as I'm traveling under right. the earth, I don't have a separate mind. I can't separate myself from that, you know, as an right, animal. But isn't, but isn't the idea when she says we can be split in two, like you can cut a worm in half. And then it'll start over as two new worms, right? right? Yeah. So what? I, I, that's what I don't quite understand is the... But then it talks about a dichotomy, your mind detached from your feelings. That right. is two separate things. But then so. the other dichotomy is your body is different from your, the mark on your spirits. Yeah. Right? So that's, yeah, that is there's like a strange. doubling of the dichotomy. Yeah, <laughs> double dichotomy. <laughs> well, the earthworm is accusing humans of being split, but then of it's not, bragging right. about being able to be split. Right. You know? So we don't always know what we're, yeah, what we're exactly talking, about. talking yeah. about, but I think, like you were saying, that the more obvious part, which is that you get eaten by a worm and the worm goes off and explores the earth, that's pretty cool. That sets you free, apparently. Right, right? Uh, yeah. But you were never free to write. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, that concludes <laughs> round three. Yeah of the animals looking at humans' poems. Maybe go back and look at the other two if you haven't. I think they're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.